Hello guys, I'm Chris Bowden. Welcome to today's Captain's Blog. It's 16.02 hours on 2.27.18. And this is the glamorous life that I lead here in the Geek Group's High Voltage Lab. So, I deal with a lot of wiring here. It just comes with the job. And one of the things I see a lot of people do over and over and over everywhere. I see this and like you just watch videos. You see like shop tours and stuff. You see people cable and storage. A lot of people do not know how to store cable decently. So I figured I'd show you a trick that will save you a lot of sticky goopy mess, a lot of zip ties, and a lot of kinky cable. So I'm sure someone Somewhere, I didn't invent this. This was taught to me by a crusty old fart a million years ago. But you start with wad O cable. Now, this is really nice cable. This is a 3000 volt rated silicone cable. We got it donated from a really awesome gentleman out on the eastern seaboard. And it's, it's all in lengths of, uh, you know, a couple of meters, not a lot. And, but this works, this is really good for cables up to. Anything under five meters, this is a really good way to store it, okay? You can go longer, but you gotta want it. But I got this whole pile of stuff, and a lot of people when they store cable, will just wrap it up, and if it's a short length like this, they'll put a zip tie on it, or they'll put, a, the most commonly you see electrical tape used, I've cleaned electrical tape off this cable. Here's the right way to do it, or at least the Bowden way, and as anybody who watches my blog knows, there's the right way, the wrong way, and the Bowden way. This is how I do it, and it works for me, and I've done it this way for 20 years. So, take your cable, start, start a loop, okay, just an out-hand loop, and it doesn't matter which way it goes for the first loop, but as a rule, that one there, and then this one above it, just a little bit, okay? And then, come out of the hole, and cinch that up, and you got a twist in it, and then go back, and come out of the hole. And you're gonna let this come around as you go. It's really easy to do this and end up with like only two. You wanna have at least three or four. And just keep coming out of the hole. Make sure you put it in there with no kinks or twists or stuff. Just, it's not hard. And just keep coming out of the hole. That's all you gotta do, just come out the hole. And you end up with a little tail. Sometimes you have enough to tuck it in. But if you don't, it's no big deal, but look. I call this a rosette. I call the act of doing this rosetting cable. There may be some old timey term for it or something like that, but this is how I do it. And for storing short lengths of cable effectively, because you can toss a hundred of those in a tote and they're not gonna tangle. They're not gonna make a mess. They're not gonna get all screwed up. And you can take out one or half a dozen or however many you need. You just toss them in a tote. Okay, boom, done. It's tedious, especially with a giant pile like this, but a little bit of work put in properly storing something, especially if you're properly storing a lot of some things, matters a great deal when it comes time for someone else to use it, for being able to find it, for having it not destroyed. I've been working for the Gate Group for a long time, and during that time, I've spent a lot of time moving, cleaning, storing equipment. And I've learned a lot of very expensive, very painful lessons along the way. So when I see other people have neat little tricks for how to store something in a way where it keeps it from getting screwed up, I'm always interested. So by all means, if you've got nifty storage tricks for, you know, cable or rheostats or whatever the hell it is that you're storing. I want to hear about it. Comment. Tell me. Because this is not rocket science. This is just, hey, I figured out how to store stuff and not break it. Because the storage and moving of equipment, the, the simple logistics, matters a lot more than people think. And if you doubt that, try moving sometime. Just move houses from one house to another. Watch how much of your crap gets destroyed. You move 
four times, you'll lose about the same, the same amount of stuff as if you had just had a house fire on the first time. And I have, more times than I care to admit, especially in our early days, had the experience of beautiful, perfect piece of equipment thrown away because some idiot didn't know how to store it properly. Sometimes that idiot was me. It happens. Like a toroid like this, right here. They're expensive. They're delicate. And they're hard to get. About half the things in this room fit all three of those categories. Delicate and expensive, hard to get, heavy, pain in the ass to move. That's pretty much everything in this room. You drop that one time, you buy a new one. Because the whole point of that thing is that it doesn't have any dents in it. And they spend most of their life precariously balanced on top of a tube. And I damn near knocked that thing off like 10 minutes ago. You'll probably see the video of that. It was... And I peed a little. The side is the, the porcelain insulators over there will break its fall when it falls off the tesla <laughs> But yeah, comment. I want to I hear your storage tricks. So here's how you do it. An out hand, loop it over, come out the hole. It's like a Polish bowling. You just keep coming out of the hole. You do this about 50 times, and you'll get good at it. Like, this is not a thing that takes years to master. You do this one day, and you'll master it. This is one of those things that, there's a knack to it, but it's not that hard of a knack. It's on par with, like, making a yo-yo come back. You can do it. Sometimes, you know, they're a little kinky. You take the kinks out. Out of the hole. Out of the hole. And anybody who learned how to tie a bowline with rabbit goes around the tree, back in the hole, yeah, that, yeah, same thing. Every now and then you get a loop, you take a second. It breaks your rhythm, but it's not hard. And once it's established, you can just, watch, watch my left hand, you can just hike that down with your hand. It's only hard for like the first couple times around. After that, it's way easier. So the trick to practice is practice starting these. Just pull it through. You want to have it no more than like 25% of your length around because how far it goes around on your first turn or two is how tight your rosettes are going to be. And you can do this with just like two pulls per lap, but they look like shit. Four or five is best. More than that, and you're just doing it for the art. <laughs> I got better shit to do. And some will be a little wonky. I mean, they don't have to be perfect. What you're doing is just keeping the cable stored in a nice tight little bundle where it won't catch on stuff and it won't get tangled. If you get a kink like that, if you get a twist in it, don't pull it tight. You gotta stop. Don't, don't actually put a kink in it. You'll get a little twist and you gotta, you gotta pay kind of attention. You can be half paying attention though and you'll still feel it. But when you get a kink like that, don't just yank it through and pull it tight. Because Especially with certain types of cable, you'll really screw it up. And this is not an appropriate way to store, like, Cat 5. That would be bad. But this is just single conductor, fine strand cable. It's nice stuff, though. This is one of those things where you pick this up, like, wow, money was spent. Silicone cable, 3,000 volt rated. Looks like about a 6 gauge, maybe an 8. I don't know. I'll read the next piece for you. We'll figure out what we're working with here.
Let's see what we got. Silver labels on, on white cable. M16878 slash 3BP. Bravo, Paul. 3000 volts, OY4S5. Don't say who makes it. But somebody's going to comment in about 30 seconds with, oh, hey, it's made by Superior Essex, or it's made by Ray, or Belden, probably. And yeah, the point that I can name three major wire manufacturers off the top of my head without thinking about it, it tells you I've been doing this too damn long. So, you guys have fun. Enjoy the show. And now you know how to rose a, a cable. And I'm gonna... I'm gonna be here a minute. Oh, that one looked like hell, then. That's all right. It works. I need a new tote. We'll be back.
1729, and it's done. Taylor helped, he even got to learn a couple things, and we have three totes filled with cable. Oh, we still got more. Hey, we still got more. It's a different size. That's grounding bus. So yeah, I'm gonna go change the shmoo in my hands and eat a Cadbury cream egg. You guys have fun. <laughs>